Hello everybody and welcome to DC Time. I'm Dean. I'm Chris. Thanks for joining us. Chris and I is glad to get together as always. Um, glad to be together. We're talking a little bit about, well, like we always do, just uh, maybe current events or things <laughs> going through. Whatever. Chris come limping around and he hurt his knee. You know, was, <laughs> There's always some destructive thing going on, right? So... <laughs> If we're talking, we might even talk a little politics. We never do. Um, of course, that's that's crazy going on. You know, that's we deal with that just in life. It's hard to be thinking of things above yeah. if you're going to talk about politics. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so true. Uh, anyway, One's in the mud. So we're, <laughs> yeah. It's easy to, um, you know, find yourself down or depressed. And, you know, we've been talking about those things are things we go through and we know we all go through them. And then, yeah, like Chris just mentioned a great point. Um, looking at things above has been some of our encouragement to do. And we're encouraged to do those things. And it's wonderful to do that to this expectation, this calling, this future expectation of glory and to be manifested, you know, with Christ and to think on where Christ is at now with the father and, all these wonderful things. Something we're going to talk about today, I'm looking at here, the purposes of God and the true basis of redemption. Arthur P. Adams, great author, love him and his stuff. Um, it's also good to concentrate and to, you know, see what scripture says or what God, to think, what does God think about you? Or... What does scripture say God thinks about us? Yeah, and who who are That's our authority. Who That's, are we? Yeah, <laughs> like yeah. But what does God think about you? And there's a big transformation of thinking, oh, I'm this bad sinner, God doesn't like me, or I got to ask forgiveness to be in his presence and all mm -hmm. that. That's a There's a big change to think, oh, God, you're his workmanship. That's the, the article that I'm going to read from, mm -hmm. maybe from A.P. Adams. You're his achievement. You're his workmanship. We're his workmanship. The potter has control the of the clay, yeah. and he's doing a work. So it's also good to know and realize some of those things. That helps going through these struggles that we go through. When mm -hmm. we other people that were, you know, that you might struggle with, or just being a part, being a human on this earth, and all the things that come at us. When you realize God's got a plan and He's not angry or upset with you. He's working his plan in you right now, no matter how ridiculous it looks. That's what we believe. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to just read some of that. Chris, you want to say anything on that? Chris has got an article to bring too. Yeah, I've um, got something I'm going to read from just um, for context. And then, no, I, it, let's just jump into what I right. wanted to share. We are God's workmanship. Okay. Uh, this is Ephesians 2.10. Also, I can maybe read that. For his achievement are we, being created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God makes ready beforehand that we should be walking in them. There the concordance says, for his achievement here, for we are his workmanship. Ephesians 2.10. A great and important truth is contained in this declaration. And one was practically, he, he's saying practically most Christians deny. Um, now, they believe it, he says, in theory, and they know it's an absolute statement and declaration, you know, mm -hmm. here in Scripture. You believe it, but then in practice, and this was me too, you know, we can be guilty of this, you deny it, you act as though you must make yourselves and in some cases, everybody else, you must make yourself into this workmanship. Yeah. And that's his point there. Like we, we start looking at these verses, believe them, but then practically speaking, you know, when you work on yourself, you start thinking what's up to the human to become God's achievement mm -hmm. or to become his workmanship. And then also, like I said, in some cases, then you're trying to make everybody else his workmanship. Yeah. Instead of realizing... No, the fact it's just a fact. God's at work. It's the operation of God in His that's going on. Yeah, yeah, and that's and just like you said, brings us comfort. It doesn't look like it to our eye, 
Right. We we look like a mess. Right, right. Um, but we're readjusting. We're changing our perspective and saying, no, we are really a finished work. Last week, one of the things I read there at the end was that the mature believer, you know, Christ is his mm -hmm. righteousness. Christ is his redemption. Um, there was yeah. some more there. I, 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 I'm failing to bring up uh, what exactly was said there, but those were the things um, that made us worthy of the future God has for us. You know? And it's showing his, there again, it's an operation of father. Exactly. It's not dependent upon the human to get into the right, mo you know, the right belief system or right thinking to become this workmanship or to right. become this achievement of God. Right. It's just absolutely true. Yeah. Uh, and that, that helps. Absolutely. Um, Philippians 2.13 says, For it is God who is operating in you to will as well as to work for the sake of his delight. That's his operation working in you. Um, these, these concepts, you know, they're, in one sense, they're very large, mm -hmm. you know, to to think of that way. And yet you and I talk about how we live. We vacillate back and forth between the relative and the absolute. And the relative can just look like a mess. And we understand that this work continues. You just read about works that were made beforehand for you to walk in. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, that's one of the reasons I like um, Ephesians 1.11 so much. In him, in whom our lot was cast also, being designated beforehand according to the purpose of the one who is operating all in accord with the counsel of his will. Um, how can you wrap your mind around all of that while living in the relative with everything that's going on? Um, I, I brought uh, an email goodie that I thought it, it cracked me up when I saw it uh, this week. You know, I, I think I've shared with you before, I come from a very politically charged family. We, we have always been politically aware, if you want to use that terminology. Um, and we've been a family that discusses politics. Well, that, that gets it to a frantic pace when you're in a, an election year, you know? And so, as I look for peace and I am studying scripture and reading articles, and then I step out of that into the political realm, which is so charged with emotion, uh, misleading information from both camps. And how do, how do you deal with that? How do you live in the middle of that? You know, mm -hmm. well, then, then I get a, email goodie this week. And here's A.E. Knock. Here's a com uh, comment from Knock. Now, you have to remember, Knock's not making a prediction about the election of 2024. Knock lived from 1874 to 1965. Now, <laughs> this, this is personal experience, I think, from what we're hearing from Knock. We are tempted to think that this world would be much better if the saints could only get control of the political power or if the highest offices were filled only with men of God. But the scriptures do not contemplate any such condition and give no instructions for ruling only for obeying, which I thought was interesting. The governments today have many honest, capable men, but they find themselves thwarted by the unseen spiritual powers which are leading mankind in opposition to God and his Christ. Loved it when I read it, and I thought, my first thought was, he's not making a prediction. He's not talking about future. I mean, he's talking about the times he lived in. And I'm not saying I love our country. I love the things about the United States that, that we experience. I love it. I don't want to live anyplace else. Um, yeah, I'm good with it. But, man, we get caught up in the emotionally charged language. You know, in this, um, I, I brought a book to Dean uh, this morning 
the uh, it's a knockbook, uh, the expose of the two natures. I got this book several weeks ago. I read four or five pages and I became so frustrated reading it. <laughs> Let's see. I I was like struggling, like I, what I can't comprehend what Knock is saying, and it just really twisted me up inside. And I had to put the book down. I wrote a, a dear friend about, man, this thing has really got me. And and then I started realizing <laughs> I, I'm hanging on to something. It's running into traditional teaching or it's running into, I need to make an adjustment. I need, you know, to go with a, per, a perspective shift. So I prayed about it, and then I went back to the book after a good long week of staying away from it. I went back to it and read it very much, a whole lot slower, a lot more for comprehension. Asked myself, what is he saying? What is he not saying? Trying to help myself with comprehension. Obviously, I'm, I'm trusting God. The prayer is always the same. Open my heart, my mind, and my eyes to the things you would have me lay hold of here. Um... I finished it today. I brought it over here to Dean. Amazing little book. I'm, I'm wanting Dean take his time for him to read it. And at a future date, I'd love to discuss it on our show. Yeah. A couple of shows. Really, really interesting well, reading. Um, I like what you said, perspective shift. Oh, man. Maybe that would be the title. It, it was I'm a like... big perspective shift. I had to really challenge myself to let go of some things on how I saw myself. And it was all about myself. It was all about how I viewed myself and sin. And it was an eye opener. So. Um, well, and like on the perspective shift, and that's what we hope to encourage you to do on all these topics. Uh, yeah. In a way, in a relative sense to be, there's no fear to mm -hmm. be open for these perspective shifts because it's wonderful. And like I said, there's no matter what topic you're talking about, it, it's funny that we we can look and and read scripture and you can be in a room full of people or you can see a lot of people online and it seems it's the same scriptures and they believe it but then practically like we we're making this point here like api is making really inside the mind if that you've got a different perspective and i had a different perspective on mm -hmm. some of these topics and that's what chris is alluding to maybe this the two nature thing and all these topics it's like what? What is your little? What? Is, what do you really think about it? What's really going on? So yeah, be free and open to hammer those things out because it's right. beautiful. To find out, and, and it brings a lot of peace to find out that you are His achievement. You are His workmanship. Mm -hmm. You are perfectly loved. You are right where God has where you need to be. You are right. I like to say mm -hmm. you're you're not wrong as far as His achievement. He's the potter. You're the clay. That's right. He knows what he's doing right now with you. Um, and so that, that comforts us to realize that and then to realize that for other people. And so, and then there's not such, you know, division or right, fighting right. or to get people on your side or in your belief system. Right. I In, um, in that book I just mentioned, the expose of two natures, when you were reading earlier, it made me think there's a statement Knock makes in there about which speaks louder, our saying we are his achievement or oh, yeah. our actions. Which of those two things mm -hmm. is speaking louder? And it made me think about how often, when I've looked at the subject of sin and how, you know, I really was not living what I thought. In a, in a way, in a mm -hmm. sense. Um, so I'm not settled on this topic. I don't <laughs> want you to think, okay, I read his book and now I'm, no, I'm still waiting on more and more realization from Father. That's all I, that's all I got. So it's fascinating. And history has taught me just, hey, be patient. God, you know, God will show you exactly what he needs to show you, you know, like Dean was just saying, um, we're his achievement. He's not done with me yet. So that's cool. Right. AP Adams says, God has created me for a definite purpose. He's created you for a purpose. 
that purpose we shall ultimately fulfill in his economy. It's like in, in his, mm -hmm. yeah, it is. Administration economy, yeah. Right. I shall surely fulfill the purpose of my creation. And he's just saying and encouraging himself and others. The only thing to do is to realize, or relatively speaking, you kind of leave yourself in the hands of the potter. Right. Right. Trusting. Um, yeah. And that's that's the per perspective shift I think we're trying to bring to realize, okay, it's okay. Mm -hmm. It's okay. And it's okay what's going on now. And yeah. the political in realm the political or realm, yeah. It's okay. The idea that father would be shocked or surprised by what's going on, you know, it's yeah. comical. I mean, right. this is all planned out. This is all going according to schedule, regardless of how it may be being relayed to you or whatever. Um, and I am, you know, I, I struggle going back and forth in that, Hey, I want to be in the peace of God, always there. Mm -hmm. And then within my own family, hearing all of this buzz, you know, and then trying to extricate sometimes myself out of it before it starts taking over my thinking. Um, so, I, you know, I hope that's, um, encouraging to you be, lots of times when we hear one mm. another we're struggling with the same things that does become an encouragement to know you're not the only one who may think this way um and to me my encouragement would be just hang on he's never let go of the steering wheel <laughs> he's got it all under control all right relax or like steve martin said chillax chillax yeah right. i love that one yeah that was a good one all right we'll let you go take care have a good week see you